welcome. My name is Janet. I'm working through the King James's Bible and today I'm working through the book of Numbers, working on chapters 17, 18 and 19 today. So let's get started with chapter 17 right now. So this chapter follows from yesterday with the rebellion, because if you remember, the Levites had caused this rebellion and there was a lot of killings. If you want to learn about that, go back to yesterday's video and you can hear all about the story. Very dramatic, but a lot of people died. 250 within the rebellion was killed and also 14,700 people lost their lives as a plague was put upon them by God for what they had done. So this chapter begins with the Lord speaking to Moses and he commands him to speak to the Israelites to tell them to get a rod from each leader of the tribe's camps. And Aaron was to put his name on the Levi's rod that was specifically mentioned. Now each man had to put their own name, their own leader's name, onto each rod. Then Moses had to take all of the rods, all of those 12 rods with the names, take them into the tabernacle and place them before the testimony. So they were very close to God and God said, and one rod will be chosen by me and it will blossom. Thus I will rid myself of the complaints of the Israelites which they make against me. And this was to end the complaining of the Israelites who were sort of seeing themselves as separate, not like part of it. It's like they think that they, Aaron and Moses, have chosen it themselves. God is showing the proof that he chose them. It wasn't the other way around. So this is why this is done. So Moses then speaks to the people and he gets them to do as God had said, you know, and get these rods and put them in front of the um, tabernacle for the Lord to witness them. So they've gone in, they've done that, and then they all get on with their day. And then after that, the next morning, the sun rises, in goes Moses to the tabernacle and he discovers one of the rods has blossomed. But it's not just blossomed, it's actually got ripe almonds coming out of it. And this rod was actually Aaron's rod with his name on it. This was the one that had blossomed. And this must have been an amazement to the Israelites. You know, you're in the desert, things like this don't just happen. A rod has suddenly now appeared to have blossomed and brought all of these almonds, ripe almonds on it. So God says to Moses to take that specific rod and to place it now in the tabernacle to show the people the proof that he has chosen Aaron and his family and the Levites to be the priesthood within the community of the Israelites. And it's also a sign to be kept of the rebellion as well. So Moses did as God asked and he placed that rod within the tabernacle. Now the Israelites said, surely we die, we perish. Whoever even comes near the tabernacle of the Lord must die. Shall we utterly die? So they are in great fear. You know, they've just had, I, you can understand why. They've lost 14,700 people amongst them. And they're like, oh my goodness, you know, if any of us step, put a toe wrong, we're, we're doomed, we're going to die. So their, their fears are really present as we close this chapter. Now we move into Numbers number 18. And this is about the law of the priests. So we're kind of going over what has already been covered in the book of Leviticus. If you've not read this book, you can watch my videos on Leviticus. They're all laid out there for you. Now this is covering the duties and the responsibilities. So we begin with the role of the Levites, which is Aaron and his sons, and they are responsible for any offences that are connected to the tabernacle. So it's their sole responsibility to make sure that tabernacle is operating as it should, as God commanded it to be. And the Levites, God has given to Aaron and his sons to help them take care of the tabernacle and so they can minister and do the duties and the laws, again, as set out by the law. One strong covenant is not to go near the altar. Now, if you remember earlier on, Aaron's two sons lost their lives because they were messing around with incense and they went really close to the altar and they were burned to death. So that's a big no-no. And to be a priest is a gift because they don't have to go into war and they are close to God. So it is a gift and no one is to breach the altar or they die. 
Now this chapter goes through all of the offerings that the priests actually get by people bringing like sin offerings, different offerings to them and they were allowed to keep a percentage of the meat, of the wine, of the fruits, of the grains and this is their like wages really for doing the work of the priesthood. So it goes into details about all of this which I'm not going to cover today. You can check out the link under this video and you will see all the details there. It says all the firstborns, that's the people and the animals, within one month of their life are to be redeemed. And this is done by a monetary value of five shekels of silver, which is about 20 giras. The only animals that do not need to be redeemed are the goats and cows, as God sees them as sacred and holy, so they don't need to be redeemed. We are told in this chapter that Aaron does not inherit any of the land nor his family because the inheritance he really gets is God. That's how it's seen by God. So he doesn't inherit the land, but he inherits God, basically. So he gets that assurance that everything is OK. You don't need land to feel safe or, you know, you've got God on your side. And this chapter finally ends with God commanding that anybody who brings an offering, it must be of the best standard and condition for it to really be seen as worthy. No defects, remember, and very young and of a specific kind. So they had to remember to do that. The same with the grain offerings and the fruit offerings. They were all the same. OK, so now we move into chapter 19. And this is all about the laws of purification. Now, this is because of all of the death that has recently happened. We are really covering this in detail because we know that if they're near a dead body or if they touch a dead body, then they are seen immediately as unclean. So this is like a mass cleansing that has to take place. So the Lord begins by speaking to Moses and Aaron about how this purification has to take place and what is required. So he asks that the Israelites bring a red heifer now, a red heifer in the camp was very rare. It had to look red because that was to signify blood and it had to be a virgin. So that was to signify it was pure. Then Eliza, the priest, had to perform the ceremony, which involved killing the heifer, then sprinkling its blood seven times before the tabernacle of the congregation to purify the people of this sin. Now, anyone touching a dead body was classed as unclean and had to go through this ritual to be cleansed. They were unclean for seven days and then they would be purified with the priest and then on the seventh day they were pronounced clean. However, if they had been pronounced unclean and by the third day they had refused to go through or hadn't cleansed themselves, then they were to be cut off from their people. And this was set as a mandate for dead and those among the dead. Now the unclean during this ceremony had to take the ashes of that red heifer that had lost its life for them and get some running water and place it in a vessel. And then a clean person had to take some hyssop and dip it in the water and sprinkle it on the tent where the people had died and all those who were present around that. So they all had to have this sprinkled on them as well to be cleansed and to be purified. And this was a statute for the purification of sin and of a dead body. So this is what had to take place to cleanse the whole camp, really. Those that had touched a body, those that had been near a body, and the remaining ones that hadn't, that were clean, were then helping to get them all to that place of cleanliness again so they could regain the community role that God had put forth in Leviticus, which were all the rules and all the ways people had to live their lives if they were going to follow God and go to this promised land, this is what had to happen. So that closes these three chapters. A lot of detail about rules, again, on what has to take place because obviously there's been a lot of anarchy and a lot of chaos in the previous chapters. So now it's kind of like, right, we've got to cleanse you all. We've got to bring you back into the lawful way of living as God commanded. And that is what these three chapters really cover today. So that's it from me today. And I will be back tomorrow with more chapters within the book of Numbers. Thank you for being here. Take care. Thank you.